Welcome, data people. We are Zuma. My name is Matt, and this is the Data for Good podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Zuma. Zuma is a dedicated recruitment company focusing on data positions across Berlin. The Data for Good podcast is for the world of data science, analytics, and engineering, giving you a platform to the thoughts and opinions of data leaders from Berlin and beyond. Today, we are joined by Christoph Krasnodebski. Analytics Director at Delivery Hero. Christoph, welcome. How are you? Welcome. Thanks a lot. I'm very good. Uh, thanks for having me with you. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you on. So yeah, first off, for those um, who aren't aware of who you are, uh, would you like to give us a quick introduction? Okay. So as you mentioned, uh, my name is Polish. It's a little bit difficult to pronounce. Uh, it's, it's Christoph, but it's all, all good. Uh, I'm a director for analytics in Delivery Hero, and I'm responsible for vendor side of things. So mainly focusing on the on the restaurants, um, managing directly um, data analytics and product analytics team, and indirectly also cooperating very closely with uh, analytics engineering, data engineering uh, teams for Delivery Hero. Awesome. And so, what does it mean to be an analytics director at Delivery Hero? What does it mean? It's a very broad question, I would say. It means working a lot with data, right? Uh, I think Delivery Hero is a great organization altogether to be uh, in analytics community because um, I think it's very much a data-driven organization, which means we have a lot of data, uh, sometimes very clean, sometimes very messy, but it's uh, like everywhere else. But altogether, it's, uh, it's a fun place to be. Amazing. And a very uh, center of innovation. I think there was a report out this morning that there's been 32 um, startups who have um, come from a delivery area background. So it kind of speaks Under, volumes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of speaks volumes of the um, environment and the setup at, at delivery hero. Well, that's, that's not true. Like, That's true. I think yeah. it's uh, altogether very uh, innovative uh, team, but it shows with the, with the numbers that you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. But that's not what we're here um, to talk about today. So today we're going to talk about the future of analytics, um, obviously in the context of the job market and how things could develop in the future. Um, to start us off, analytics, is it a, a good time to get into analytics? What are your thoughts? I think it's it's the best times. Uh, I mean, being very specific, here and today, it's a difficult market for tech companies, as we know it, right? So there is there is some layoff rounds coming from usually from Bay Area in the US, driven mm -hmm. by I don't know Amazon, Microsoft, and so on. Uh, but altogether, I think data driven roles have never been so much proliferated in in the history. So. I think it's it's uh, it's great time, uh, and the toolkits, the the languages are more accessible than any time ever, right? Mm, absolutely. How, how have you, in your career, how have you seen the evolution of analytics from maybe when you first started uh, to where you are now? I mean, it's constantly evolving. I started quite a long time ago. It was uh, sixteen years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say back then analytics was very much Excel driven. So everything uh, you would do, you would do in Excel, maybe using some uh, visual basic, but altogether you would work uh, with these tables. Now it's so much more than that. And, and I'm really glad, right? So uh, first of all, you have this um, differentiation of roles, right? So you have uh, BI developers, you have strictly data or business analytics, you have product analytics. There is the analytics engineering, there is data engineering. Mm -hmm. And 15 years ago, we wouldn't have that much of it. Uh, so I think it's um, it's very nice because you can find your uh, you can find your niche. Obviously, some roles are evolving, like you would have, I don't know, statisticians back then, and then and now you have data science, which is actually very much proliferating also for the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a great, great landscape because you can choose among so many different roles and specialities that it actually can can suit your need and skills very much. Absolutely. So if we were to strip it right back, 
what are analytics teams needed for? What they are needed for. So you mean yeah. what the what the analytics is for? <laughs> yeah. What, why why do we have them? Why do they exist? Yeah, that's a good question. I think uh, that's very much depends who you ask, right? Because I think there there's no single answer to that. Um, in my opinion, we are supporting function and we are supporting in making good decisions, right? So so good mm -hmm. decision is the basic of of uh, what we do. Obviously, we are also building some data products. So sometimes analytics and especially data science part of part of it i'm not sure if data science would feel like be, being a part of analytics community altogether but i think this is the data data roles yeah. data science is more towards building products that actually um, um so data science products are fueling the businesses right so mm -hmm. often the businesses are set uh within the um, center of the of the business and um they they fuel the business but altogether i would assume mostly analytics is for making good decisions right with data with insights with understanding of what's going on on the market with competition with our products and so on okay so where does the where does the value come from if we were um a business and we have a little bit of analytics, but we really want to ramp it up. How, where are we trying to get to? What is the, the Valhalla for, for analytics? Valhalla for analytics. That's a, that's a good question. Let me, let me switch a little bit the context of this question, right? Because where the value comes from is a little bit um, related to the question, what will be the value of analytics in two, three, five years? Mm -hmm. And in the context of how is AI influencing that, right? Because there's a lot of discussion that, okay, AI will, will steal our, our job and uh, yeah. maybe analysts will not be needed anymore in five years, for example, mm -hmm. right? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I'm trying to be, to be on the optimistic side. And let me, uh, let me tell you the story that I think is somewhat relevant here. Maybe some people will will say it's a different story, but but I would say a story that that in my opinion is relevant. Yeah. Like, um, if you go back like 40, 50 years ago, data roles existed, but they were very much different, right? You would have mm -hmm. I don't know statisticians. Yeah. You would have maybe analysts who would just print uh, sheets of paper and just try to analyze data and with the marker just cross whatever is important and then do some calculations there as well. Mm -hmm. And even you would you would have BI people, we call them BI now, back then they, they weren't BI because there was no computers, but there were people that were specifically um, um, handling charts, drawing, and yeah. making the presentations for the, for the data analytics community, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you ask back then 50 years ago, hey, now we have computers coming in, right? The IBM is producing a personal computer, everyone will have a computer. Uh, mm -hmm. what will happen with us? It seems like, okay, all the, all the calculations can be done with computer much faster than a human is doing that, right? Uh, the charts can be drawn by, by computer and maybe some insights can be gathered from computer. I would say when the computer era entered the data field, some mm -hmm. would say, okay, our roles can become redundant, but this has not happened. Uh, I would say there's a shift that actually opposite thing, thing happened, which is, the data proliferated across many more companies and many, many more companies started to look at the data and the people working there would become more and more efficient. Mm -hmm. Obviously, some role would change, some roles, like you wouldn't have any more people who are drawing charts on a piece of paper, right? But you, you still produce dashboards, you, you do different, different things with visualization, mm -hmm. but this role is not there anymore. And I think this is the same story for, for AI, right? Where we are talking about the AI, I think, first of all, it's an improvement of what we are doing and not making data people obsolete. Yeah. Um, and secondly, I think with the, with the AI becoming more and more popular, the data itself is actually becoming more and more popular. We are gathering more and more data every mm -hmm. day, every year. Yeah. And with more data, companies are more focused on being data-driven, data-informed. And because of that, I think the data roles will only be more popular in the future because of that. 
Um, and getting back to your original question, what's the what's the value of um, having analytics team or not having analytics team? Yeah. I think the difference is when you make a decision, you can either base it on intuition or you can base it both on intuition and data and the insights. And mm -hmm. I do believe that companies nowadays are seeing value um, in having this data um, driven decisions. So because of that, I think we can we can improve. Sorry, my camera has uh, gone crazy and I'm a little bit blurry. Let me just try to fix it just very quickly. Oh, good. Oh, good. Pairs all good on uh, on our side. So yeah, sh should be should be all good. Um, yeah. So with more data, better decisions. But will it get to a point? where AI will be able to make better decisions off the back of the insights that they have provided themselves. Is is this the biggest concern mm. that people will have? That's a good question. Uh, probably I would, I would assume there are already some experiments where you can drive a company with an AI decision making, right? But I don't think, to be honest, it's not a mainstream in our mainstream for the next couple of years. It, it, there can be a point, obviously also def depending on how you define AI, right? Because if you mm -hmm. define it as uh, intelligence that, that can improve itself and, and become better in everything, then we would see the future where AI will take over everything that humans are doing at the moment, right? But I don't think we are, we are needed. And in my opinion, the big thing of providing an insight and providing a data to, um, customer of data yeah. is actually the trust, right? So what we are seeing, for example, at the moment with um, with the chat GPT or other tools is they can do some tasks very, very well. Yeah. But if you go very much technical, if you go very much into areas where um, knowledge and trust is needed, there is no guarantee if the output produced is really um, trustworthy or not. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think in decision making in analytics in data, it's even more, more important. So let's imagine for now you are you are a CEO, you are getting rid of your data team and instead use the AI to give you direction and analyze your data streams, whatever they have. Right. Mm -hmm. Now AI is telling is telling you, hey, we need to move into this market because it's it's good, right? It's it's yeah. a huge potential. Now i the issue I would have with this is how a CEO can be sure if this is a good answer or not. And if there is no data people, there is no way to verify it. If the, if the data is clean, if the conclusion is correct and so on. Mm -hmm. Again, probably with AI, we will build this trust over the next five, 10, 15 years. And mm -hmm. when we are sure, okay, this is actually the outcome produced, it's, it, the outcome is good. Maybe we'll gain this trust, but I think it's, um, it's not there. And this is where, we analytics people, analytics community come in, right? Because yeah. not only we analyze the data that we have in front of us, and by analyzing data, I mean taking a data set and manipulating it, mm -hmm. but we also have a, more things than that. First of all, we have the context, yeah. context of the question, context of the business. We have additional information from the, uh, from the people uh, we know from our experience and so on, which is often not taken into consideration if you just look purely on data, right? So you can, you can say, okay, but I know this is happening. It's not visible on data, yeah. but part of the business is that it will just not work. It has been, I don't know, proven some time ago by five different companies and we don't see it. Again, the more data is aggregated into AI, probably the results will be better and better, but I mm -hmm. still believe we are far away from the point where we can rely solely on, on AI. Could you see it as the more data we get, the more complex the insights become, the higher the risk, the bigger the need for human to be involved in the process? I would say so. I would say so. Um, but also the more data we get, the more difficult it is to analyze, right? So 
what I'm seeing, for example, if we if we want to discuss the future of, of analytics community, we are working more and more with big data. The, the, our databases are growing all together and we are collecting more and more data points from mm -hmm. all over all over the world. Right. Um, with that, I think there are new challenges that, for example, were not that much visible 10 years ago or yeah. 15 years ago. Right. And one of the challenges we have so, so much data that we need to be very specific what part how do we filter it out this is the yeah. first thing and how do we how do we analyze this data right mm -hmm. because of that i think for example roles as uh, analytics engineering and data engineering yeah. will be on the grow because if you have a data set like again i'm going back 15 years ago right if you have a mm -hmm. data set that fits into excel then it's fine you just make a pivot or whatever any and you can just uh, click through it but with the with the um, tables going into terabytes and petabytes, mm -hmm. you need to have this good filtering and layering of data in order to be able to produce a good results to, to, to get to the insight. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, there's more data than you can possibly analyze by, by yourself, I would say. So, yeah, there's, there's no question that data engineers, analytics engineers are, are going to be more and more common in all companies um, and even more valuable with self-service self -service analytics and business users becoming a bit more technical because the tools are a lot easier to use. Does that mean that these two areas will get closer and closer so that the maybe the middle person of the analytics specialist becomes less common in companies what are your thoughts on that will analytics specialists become redundant or less common yeah with the the um growing number of data engineers and business users business professionals becoming more technical and having the tools available will yeah. we still need the, the analyst specialist in the middle yeah, that's a good question. So I think the big role for um, data engineering and analytics engineering can be producing good data sets that can mm -hmm. actually be used for, for self-service tools for the business users, right? And we actually want this enablement. We want business users to get to deep dive into data, right? To, to have the tools and have the possibility to explore the data themselves and understand it. But I don't think it, it means that uh, data analytics roles will become less frequent because mm -hmm. ultimately um, business users have many tasks and analyzing data is only one of it. So whenever they want to deep dive and considering that our data structures are getting complex, we are collecting more and more data. Mm -hmm. I think they will need this. Uh, they will need this support from um, from analysts, right? I think. With the with the automation and with the self service enable, it just we will all become more productive and we will be able to more efficiently work on the on the data, um, starting from maybe uh, being much quicker and much more efficient in making new visualization, but also uh, when we are talking about writing code, uh, utilizing um, tools like ChatGPT to to speed up the process, I would say, mm. can be actually beneficial. But this actually gives us benefit of having more time to discuss those things, to understand more, and to, to produce um, better and more accurate conclusions. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a labor shortage in, in data in general. There's not enough experts in the area. So I don't think the role is going to vanish, but it's interesting to hear um, your view on how it could evolve and it sounds like with mundane tasks being removed through automation then people have a lot more time to focus on the role that they're actually being hired for and will create more value i would agree i would agree but when, when you mention also on data shortage i would say it's not evenly distributed right so for example some roles are um easier to easier to get mm -hmm. uh, from the perspective of employee and some roles are harder as i mentioned for example data and analytics engineering 
is on the rise, which means yeah. there are more positions showing up. And I think the importance of those will be growing. Whereas data analytics are B and BI roles, I would say they are also on the rise, but much slower in comparison to how many people would apply for them. And I would say in the, in the context of being a freshly graduate who want to go into analytics, mm -hmm. I would say it's a little bit more difficult for them to stand out those days, right? Because previously, if you had any um, dashboarding experience, you had a medium SQL, you had a, some experience in Tableau or Power BI or, or different tool, that was enough to get in. Yeah. Now it's a little bit tricky because everyone is learning that. And as I mentioned, those those tools and um, learning paths are very accessible, which means if you stop your skill set as, okay, I know SQL and I know Tableau, this is often not enough to get to land a job in a, in a company. You have to stand out. I would say a good practice to standing out is either expanding your language, uh, technical language or skill set um, experience or actually to get involved into um, private or pro bono projects where you can actually flesh your portfolio of the things that you did, the projects, the models, the, the dashboards or whatever. So it'd be great to go into more detail on that. So if someone is a graduate coming out of university or even if someone's from a different area of the business that isn't necessarily super technical and they want to, to get into analytics, where should they focus with all this new um, AI generated hype going on at the moment? How, how would they cut through that to start a successful career in, in analytics? That's a good question as well. Uh, I would say, and not an easy one, right? Not, a, not an easy to answer. From my perspective would be, first of all, you have to decide on something. It's, it's very difficult to be, um, fresh graduate mm -hmm. and if you if you say i have no idea where where i want to go then if you have no idea probably the best course of action for you is to try to land an internship in one two three companies and yeah. try just try different things because otherwise it's um it's a difficult and then once you try different things you have to narrow the search to only one path or another right mm -hmm. so if you go to the into ml engineering just focus on this, do some proper learning, and then maybe get involved yourself into one, two or three projects that are out there on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. you, can, you can do some projects and then put them on the portfolio and then you say, okay, I did the projects on this and this, and then I'm looking for junior roles that are related to, uh, to this project. Um, obviously, if you're graduating the studies, ideal situation is, that you already have those projects in your portfolio because during studies probably you can you can uh, utilize your network from your yeah. um, university and you can you potentially still have time to to do those projects once you get into uh, normal normal regular work the time is a little bit less um, but if if you graduated and you don't have any projects in your portfolio just look on the internet I don't know challenges whatever is open, there is a lot of open open things that you can get involved and try to build yeah. a portfolio of projects that you have, at least one, two, three. And then ideally land a intern or junior uh, junior role. Once you started with the first position, I think it's much easier to, to go forward because the most things that you learn is actually during maybe first two, three years of your work. This is the yeah. um, great jump from what you have learned during studies to actually practically using the skill sets, right? And are you, or what are your thoughts on the two schools of thought? Start generalist and become a specialist or start super focused and then aim to become more generalist as you get more experience? Um, I would say that there is no golden rule, obviously, right? Uh, both, both, both are possible and feasible. I would say starting a specialist is or or start started focused is easier path, right? Because mm -hmm. you already know what kind of skill set you need to master, and then you can very narrowly select the the, the courses, the trainings that you want to attend, and over I don't know a couple of months, you should become fairly 
good in those skills, right? And then mm -hmm. it's much easier to land the job and progress in the job because again, your skill set is, is, is very focused. Now, from this point, after you are, I don't know, five, six years of experience, it's a little bit more difficult to go back into generalist, right? Because you have mm -hmm. narrow knowledge and to expand your knowledge uh, at some level in the organization could be, could be tricky. Other way around, if you are a generalist and then try to try to land a focus job, I think it's it's more difficult at the beginning because yeah. again, for those generalist roles, there is a lot of competition there. But once you land the job, it's okay. And then being in a company and seeing what's there, you can still uh, you can still focus on something. Awesome, yeah, great. Both both are equally possible, I would say. Yeah, um, I'm conscious of time. Now we are talking about um, juniors and, and interns, and I'd love to get your thoughts on uh, a specific topic within Chat GTP. So, as a senior or someone who's been around the block, using these tools to cut out a lot of admin time, make things faster, it's it's a, it's a godsend for a lot of people. But what does it mean for those who are starting out who? Don't know what they're doing and using these tools to get somewhere does, does that make sense so a senior coder who's using chat gpt to write some some code they can review it really quickly make a couple of changes put it into uh, production if a junior does that they don't know what mistakes they're making so when it comes to analytics is it going to be a, is going to help or hinder um yeah. the development of data professionals that's a fair point that's a fair point again i would be optimistic on this side i think chat gpt and tools uh, like that can only support your learning if mm -hmm. you are willing to learn right so it's not it's not really about the tool because obviously you can uh you can have the um, ai to write the code for you yeah. um now the question is how you are going to use it, right? Are you going to use it to understand the code and help you understand this code because it's possible? Mm -hmm. Or are you just going to let ChatGPT do the job for you, which is obviously not the greatest because you will hit the wall and you will hit, if you don't understand things, you will just uh, fail um, at, at, at some point, right? Yeah. Ultimately, we should also ask ourselves in a couple of years, in five or 10 years, how much code writing will be an essential skill going down the road, right? So for example, in school, in schools, we are uh, teaching or learning how to handwrite, how yeah. much the handwriting is important or not, not important at the moment in the current world, it's probably a, a question mark, right? And I would yeah. put the same question mark for, um, for coding skill set, but, Again, seems like those tools are actually disrupting educational um, industry altogether and can be very helpful in educating us. So it boils down to the willingness and openness of the person using it and how they are using the tools. Yeah, I think it's very much a, a calculator moment with mathematics. Did the introduction of calculator calculators in education, did that? propel us forward or is it holding some people back because it became much easier um, exactly or, probably both probably both probably both because it seems like not everyone needs to um calculate uh, advanced mathematics and probably not everyone needs to needs to code but ultimately for those who want they will it will support their their learning yeah it's uh it's something that I guess we'll never know the true answer, but I think it could be a similar moment um, between AI and education and business as well, as much as uh, the calculator as well. But unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Um, but thank you very much for your rich insights. It's been a pleasure having you on. Thanks a lot. Great pleasure. Thanks for inviting. Awesome. And as always, the listeners, drop your questions and feedback. Uh, we'll pick out some to be answered on, on future podcasts and don't forget to like and share so we can reach uh, as many people as possible but it is bye from us thanks once again
Thank you. And ciao for now.